Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to 10,000 and Below, where I go through games that are ranked lower than 10,000 on Board Game Geek. Because we always talk about new stuff, so sometimes it's nice to go back and look at older things. So today we're at games that are ranked 14,401 and below, so let's take a look. Now let's take a look at the first game on the list, so that would be Metro 2033 Breakthrough, and then a few others. So Thingamabots, I've actually reviewed that one. Uh, Upwards Deluxe, we'll take a look at that. And then this one here, I can't pronounce that one, but I've reviewed it. And then Raceway 57 has 120 reviews. Here we go. Metro 2033. I remember looking at this one. Maybe I looked at the board game version. This is from Hobby World 2015. The World of Nuclear War. Yeah, it looks like everyone turns into a mutated, gross version of themselves. Yeah, this looks like a Hobby World style game, but I don't know that I've ever played this one. And neither have many other people. Almost no reviews of it. Hmm. There is a Metro 2033 game, um, but this is the, I think, the card game version. All right, Thingamabots. This is a simple little game from Game Right, designed by Bernie DeCoven, who was major fun for a really long time until he passed away uh, just a couple years ago. And this is a memory style game. You turn it over and name the robots, and then you turn them over again and shout the name. It's for kids, but it has f fun, cute artwork. You know, the robots look like the, the movie with robots, and like really similar to that. But they're funny enough. If you have kids, this might be one you enjoy. Upwards Deluxe. I'm not a huge fan of, of Upwards. I mean, it's just kind of a spring off of Scrabble. But um, I guess it's a nicer version. Is there some electronic elements to it? Does it keep score electronically? Huh. I don't know. I guess so. I don't know that. In a, man, that does not look very deluxe to me. But all right. All right, this one here, I don't know that it has a an actual American name. Oh, maybe it does on there. I can't see it. That's right. You're putting the different sheep underneath these different things, and you're rolling and trying to remember what's under each one. A good little kid's game. Hava makes a lot of these good little kid's games. Um, but I must not have liked this one too much since I've ranked it a five. It's been a while since I played this one. Huh, I don't even see my review on here. Maybe I didn't review it. Maybe I just played it with the kids and didn't really care for it. It's an older game, though, so not eh, whatever. All right, Raceway 57. This is 120 ratings. This one here is from Front Porch Classics. Well, it has a neat look to it. I like those little cars. Front Porch Classics are pretty standard games. Those are some, huh, some neat looking cars. Looks almost like a roll and move racing game. Yep. Well, not a lot of talk about it. So, from 2005. All right, let's continue on our, our journey here. The Prince's Bride, as you wish. That only has 53 ratings, but we'll look at it because it's called The Prince's Bride. Oh, this one's called... And this one, ooh, Gracias has 204 ratings, and Disney Apple to Apples has 207 ratings, and Sanctuary has 264 ratings. All right, first, Princess Bride As You Wish. This is from Game Salute. Daniel Salas is the game. You're drafting cards, trying to get icons, and it's a drafting game. Probably doesn't have a lot of ratings because there's a... Uh, game Salute got the license for um, Princess Bride, and they made several games, and it uses stills. Now, I love Princess Bride. It's in my top ten favorite movies, probably. Um, but the the stills here in this, this, doesn't, this isn't a very good-looking box, unfortunately. This is from Bruno Catala and Ludovic Mablanc. Um, this is the Fart Factor. So this is about farts. All right. Well, you know, that sounds like a classy, classy game. Um, <laughs> but it's Bruno Gatala. I'm going to buy this and give it to Z. Maybe he actually reviewed it. Who knows? 
Tie break for smell points. You're trying to get smell points in this game. Great. I'm so proud to be a board gamer. All right, gracias. This is this is from Richard Borg and Alan Moon, huh? So you're going to take a stack of cards, one hidden, two visible, and keep one hidden and one visible. Then the second visible is given to another player. Sounds like a really simple game. So why is it not so highly rated? The art is too cringy. Ah, yeah, yeah. Set collection game with a bit of luck thrown in. So it has an I played random. Okay, card game. Okay, card game. Ah, well, too bad. That's a good combo, I think, Richard Borg, Alan Moon. Disney Apples Apples. Well, that's Disney Apples Apples. I mean, what else am I supposed to say? Uh, Apples Apples is a great game. Disney version. Has art on the cards, which is unlike Apples Apples. The Poison Apple. Trustworthy, sweet, or wicked. And it looks like there's some special rules here to these cards. Hannah Montana, huh? I bet they're kind of wishing they didn't put that card in the set. All right. Sanctuary Thieves World from 1982. So you are, this is based on Robert Asprin's anthology. Yeah, this looks like one of those old classic games from Mayfair, huh? You're moving around the board. Wow. This is an old game for sure. It looks really cool. Again, this is the kind of game that when I was a teenager, I would have been all, I mean, look at that. That board just, just really enchants me. Nowadays, probably not that fantastic of a game. All right. But 264 ratings is a lot. Let's continue on as we go down by here. Take Back Toe. I want to look at that based on the name. Play Me, Alice in Wonder Dice. That's a weird name, but it has 222 ratings. Space Junk has almost 100 ratings, 98. And Brainstorm has 168 ratings. So let's take a look at those four games. Take Back Toe, abstract strategy game. You're going to move chips to create three stacks of equal height on their side of the board. This looks like a public domain game almost. Huh. Terrible name, though, I think. Play Me, Alice in Wonderland. This is from Coolman. You're not at this one? Well, I don't hate the art. has a lot of cool, colorful dice on it. I wonder why this one is rated so low. It looks kind of cool. Let's look at the comments. I'm kind of curious about this. Very simple. Too simple, maybe. Chaos or Kahoos. Uh, everyone's just rolling dice and not paying attention to each other. Sold as fast as possible. Fun dice frenzy for short periods of time. So, speed dice game. Okay. Man, I do like the art, the cover. Yeah, I don't hate it. Cool. Space Junk. This is from Lamplight Games from 2014. Uh, this one sounds... Okay, Ryan did a preview for me seven years ago on the Dice Tower, but I don't believe I ever actually reviewed the game. I do not really care for that art. Um, and the board, yeah, it does look super prototype. Oh, I don't like that art. This board looks super prototypey. Blue suede shoes, please don't step on them. Board game, ironic, no? Uh, so it's a game that's trying to be funny, but isn't, unfortunately. Maybe it's a good game, though. I don't know. Eh. Oh, well. All right. Then we got Brainstorm here. This is, wow, what a boring cover from 1990. You have to rattle off a bunch of things. For each answer that's written on the category card, you may advance one step. Oh, okay. So this is actually really similar to... Um, the Blue Orange game. Okay, this is the cover I've seen before. I've seen this Brainstorm cover before. Huh. Smarty Pants is the name of the game I'm thinking. It's highly derivative of Outburst. Eh, okay. Well, I guess it must have been a derivative enough that no one's talking about it. Alrighty, Spoilers the Game has 218 ratings. Knock your blocks off. That's one I took a look at. Uh... Corrupted Kingdoms. I also want to take a look at this one called Ghost Pirates. And then Map Ominos, Europe. Go Fish Yourself? That doesn't sound like a pleasant name of a game. 
uh, Tribulation, Papalona, Viva San Fermin, and Pick a Paint. All right. Well, that's a bunch of games to look at. Here we go. Spoilers the game. It's a party trivia style game. Didn't I take a look at this one one time? I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. Um, there's a question about a movie, three possible answers. A spoiler knows the right answers and earns points when everyone else gets it right or correct. I feel like I played a version of this. The spoiler is trying to mislead people. Yeah. It sounds like a fun concept, but not something I would want to buy. re it by Spoilers the Game. Let's take a look at that one. Uh, this one, I didn't play either. I really feel like I played one of these games. Meh. All right, knock your blocks off. This is a game which you build a structure, and then people are trying to knock the crown off someone else's. So you're going to build them, and you're building an approved structure. It's been a while since I played this one from Game Right. It works well for kids. And that's basically what it is. They're fun cubes to roll, and you're trying to put the blocks on top of each other so the colors match. Corrupted Kingdoms. Oh, I did not like this one. I remember playing this one. This is from Artana. Uh, unfortunately, Artana has a lot of good ideas, but this one, a neat idea of, um, it's, it's politics, really, except that it's politics in a fantasy kingdom. And there just was too much chaos, too much stuff going on in this for there to be any real strategy at all. I love the concept of it, that you're the puppeteer behind people, but this one just didn't work very well. Ghost Pirates. Well, that box cover would never sell me on this game. That doesn't look like Ghost Pirates at all. Although, this idea of the ships moving by each other, yeah, it looks like another game that came out later on. Brooklyn Indie Games. It's a tactical two-player game. It was named to the 2014 Games 100 list, but that doesn't mean anything. Um, huh. Didn't do very well. All right, Map Ominos, Europe. Well, this kind of looks neat. They're like countries, and you put them next to each other based on the things that are on the side. Can we focus in on these cards? Huh. I like this concept. That's neat. So I guess if they have different seas on the different sides, you can connect them to each other. Well, that's a, that's a kind of a cool concept. The cards look neat. Huh. But people don't tend to like dominoes, and probably the game wasn't that good. Let's take a look at the comments. More of an educational tool than a game. Yeah, I figured. Abstract. Some knowledge of geography helps. Yeah. So it's basically dominoes with some education thrown in. Go fish yourself. It's a party game. It turns go fish into something fun to play. You're trying to make pairs of dirty-sounding, nautically-themed cards. All right. Well, let's move on. Tribulation. Oh, yes. 1974, uh, I gave this one a four. You're putting out these uh, tiles in a seven by seven grid, and you're trying to find three tiles whose equation goes to a total. The problem with these games is, if someone's good at math, they're gonna whoop everyone else at the game consistently. Pamplona, Viva, San Fermin. Man, I really wanted to like this game more than I did. It's okay, but essentially it's the running of the bulls, the game. So you can see all the people here running from the bulls. Cool things. I remember the first time I played this was outside. I very rarely played board games outside, but we were locked out of the gaming area we were supposed to play in. I remember playing this outside, and the cards kept flying around. But um, the game itself is you're just trying to outmaneuver everybody else. It's okay at best. I do like the theme, though. Even if in real life I think it's crazy that people do that. Pick a Paint. This is a kid's game in the Playroom Entertainment line uh, by Reinhard Stopp, who designed most of the games in this line. And you're working together to paint different objects of various colors, but a color can only appear once in each row and column. So it's a decent game, helps teach colors. Not fantastic, but works for kids. All right, let's continue going down in this list. Oh, here's Tic Tac Doe. Oh, well, we already looked at the other Tic Tac team game, so we'll look at, at this one here. Hannibal, the Second Punic War. Um, last word. I gave you my heart. And here's Monopoly, Game of Thrones. Release. Sun, Moon, and Stars. All right. Well, we'll be back in just a second. Let's take a look at those five games. So Tic-Tac-Doe is a game that plays with the Ice House pieces. If you've never seen these before, Looney Labs makes these Ice House pieces. There's a lot of games, and here's one here. 
and it just uses some different uh, rule sets to play with them. That looks okay. Hannibal, the second Punic War, 1991. This is from Decision Games. This is fairly low ranked for a war game um, because war gamers, you know, you're not going to play this not knowing what you're getting into. You see that map. Man, I don't like that map. I'm not a huge fan of hex grids, but I think a rectangular grid is not much better. Uh, I think the hex grid has a better, cleaner look to it. But let's take a look and see what the comments say because they're war gamers. They would know. C rules are vague. The components are bad, huh? Well, lots of errata. Graphics aren't good. Rough going with the rules. Bad rules and bad graphics. Well, if board gamers are complaining about that, they must really be bad. Last word. Um, you're putting uh, pieces down at a 10 by 10. Boggle, pick up the tiles used. As tiles removed, scoring opportunities become more sparse. Oh. Okay, so there's a bunch of things here, and you're just trying to pull off letters to make words. And you get to use a special piece that pulls them off. Last word from the makers of Upwords, Milton Bradley. Release, a light card game about software, and the people who make that, I do remember playing this. Um, I remember the artwork here being very much like getting as close as you can without walking into copyright infringement. Um, it was, a, it was an interesting little game, a trick-taking style game. Not good enough to get Dice Tower Seal of Approval, but it was okay. I remember enjoying it. Sun, Moon, and Stars, though, I did not like. This is from Minion Games, and this was a little card game about playing the right card at the right time. It was, it was so complicated for a little card game. I was instantly, and also, look at that. That doesn't look very interesting at all. I was not impressed with this one, unfortunately. Uh, let's see here. We got Fortuna from 1984 with 92 ratings. Pajago boards. Oh, we'll take a look at them. I remember that game. Um, Utter Nonsense Naughty Edition. Yeah, I don't think we'll look at that. Uh, let's see here. Quadify gave a 5.5 to. Oh, there's the Dragon Ball Z CCG. Oh, well, here's a game I gave a 7 to. Overpower. Overpowers rank 14,496. It makes me sad, but we'll get back to that. Fortuna here. Um, oh, it's a Monopoly game. But there's 44 spaces on the board instead of 40. Instead of rolling dice, you use sets of 12 tokens and move. It's less random. There's four restaurants. Huh. When did this come out? 1984. Sounds more strategic than Monopoly. Woo! Pretty bad looking game, though. Pajago boards. This is uh, basically you just put the pieces in the board as fast as you can. But they all have different numbers of sprockets on them, essentially, or whatever you call it. The, the, key, the, co the keys on the cog. Or, um, yeah, this is a lot harder than it looks. I've done this before, and you're like, oh, which one goes where? And then you can get points for putting stuff next to each other, different colors and things like that. Um, it's not much of a game. It's a cool, it's a cool, cool board, though. Quadify, yeah, this one here, it's an abstract strategy game. Um, you're stacking game pieces, you're trying to keep your game in bounds, and a force person to force your opponent. It's a neat looking game, but it's just not that interesting. There's a lot of other games that use really cool wooden blocks. I don't know anything about Dragon Ball CCG, but obviously it's gonna sell because it's Dragon Ball, except they add double zeros to the end of everything. And this one, obviously, was not as popular as many other CCGs. But hey, Dragon Ball Z. Now this CCG, this one makes me sad. I like this so much. In fact, just last week, I was on eBay looking at cards, debating, debating whether to get back in this game, where you would take four the different characters. It started as Marvel, then they added DC and Image. The DC set was underpowered. The Image set was overpowered. Ha ha ha. Um, they, had, they started with three stats, energy, fighting, strength, and then later on they added intellect as a fourth stat. Uh, cards came with, uh, the characters came with special powers, there's the special universe cards, and then there was normal power cards that you would play against the other person. I love this game. It's one of the most played games in my life. I still think the idea of bidding cards uh, to attack other players, these are uh, the different mission cards that you would essentially use to to bid on stuff, they worked so well. It was such a cool concept. The game was broken. There was a lot of uh, problems with the game, but at the end of the day, I still really enjoyed it. Did someone literally take a picture of every single one of these cards? 
All right, that's better. Put seven cards on a page, not one at a time. Ah, oh, boy. I really do like this game. Oh, well. I'm kind of alone on that one. Well, not alone, but not many people liked it. There's, and again, it has its problems. Came out after Magic, Marvel CCG. But if someone could clean this up and make a better game, I'd really appreciate it. All right, then we have Albuquerque with 92 ratings. Nova Cry with 157. And we always, well, let's take a look at this baby boom. And then we always look at the last one. And here we got Taco versus Burrito. Albuquerque. Albert, no, sorry, it's not Albuquerque. Sorry. Al Albuquerque. Five by five. And you are trying to capture opponent's pieces, some sort of abstract game. Nah, doesn't look that interesting. Nova Cry. This is from World Within. Um, Sam reviewed this game. I don't think I ever played this one. I did not. Ah, it just looks very generic. Like a generic space game. Maybe it's good. It's not very highly rated. Baby Boom. Oh, this is not about having babies. This is about babies blowing each other up with bombs. So, Baby Boom indeed. Blow your dice bombs to kill all those of your opponents. That sounds great. Let's kill babies. I'd play it. Oh, they're cute babies. That's okay then. Taco vs. Burrito. Come on now. Why is this even a thing? Tacos win hands down over burritos. Um, create the weirdest... Oh, I like this. this is the publisher's Hot Taco Incorporated. Let's see what other games they've made. That's it. Taco vs. Oh, no, they haven't. They made four games. Bold Made. Oh, I, yeah, actually. Isn't Bold Made the one that went to just Kickstarter recently? Yeah, I want to say this went to Kickstarter. Huh. Well, I wonder if they still call themselves Hot Taco Incorporated when, <laughs> when they pushed that one. Anyway, Taco vs. Burrito. Looks like a simple take that style game. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that. All righty. Well, hey, I still like this. As we go through each 100, we still find cool games to talk about. And this time, I got to rave a little bit about one of my favorite CCGs, Overpower. And we're, there's still many, many more games to go. I think I'm going to find games I like, hopefully, in every 100. I have yet to hit 100 where there wasn't a game I liked. But it's going to happen soon enough, I'm sure. But we'll see. Anyway, thanks so much for watching 10,000 and below. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.